What's up guys? Welcome to another subscriber text game breakdown. This is the series where I roast the text interactions you guys send me and give you solid, no bullshit feedback so that you can use that to improve your own success. And this is going to be an interesting one. This is one of the members from our mastermind group. I would rate him as somewhat intermediate in terms of his text game. And so he doesn't make any really stupid mistakes, except one. Mainly it's just a few subtle things that he does wrong, which add up to fuck him over. So let's just jump into it. All right, without further ado, let's just crack right into it. So this is Tinder and he opens her with the infamous swipe right for possible nice booty, which is an opener that I've personally used before in the past with success. So, so far so good. She says possibly be nice, possibly be a catfish, 50-50 gamble, a little bit of a shit test. And he says, oh, and she says worth the risk question mark with a little cute emoji. He says, you tell me, are you worth it? Perfect response. So basically what he's saying is, hey, you're gonna be the one that qualifies to me. I'm the buyer, you're the seller, which is the frame you wanna have. She says, of course, don't ever doubt it. He says, I'll take my chances, you seem like my type. Again, also, good text, very dominant, very confident, just very on point. She says, do tell, what is your ideal type? Here he deviates from, you know, perfect text game to like intermediate text game. He says, you're cute, adventurous, active, submissive, with a nice booty, innocent with a bit of a wild side. This is just a bit, too wordy and superfluous. I would have said cute and curvy with a bit of a wild side. Like they could be summed up so easy. Or for example, if she's not curvy, cute and blonde with a bit of a wild side, like bam. So she says, interesting, all very endearing traits. How would you describe yourself aside from your bio? So what she's trying to do here is she's trying to make him qualify. She's, I don't think it's conscious, but subconsciously she's trying to wrestle back the frame and she's like, hey, I wanna be the buyer. You don't get to be the buyer, I'm the hot girl. And fortunately he falls for it. He says, oh gosh, where do I start? Confident, funny, blonde, dominant with great oral skills, lots of love for singing, traveling, eating pussy, and great food. Pretty much sums me up. I used to have a pet cat who I adopted after rescuing from a car engine. A good booty always triggers me. Your turn. So this is way too, I would say flamboyant, way too wordy, you know, it could be way more succinct. So like, it just kind of reads like, oh gosh, where do I start? Confident, funny, uh, great food, eating pussy. I used to have a pet cat. He's just like, it doesn't come off as confident and dominant as earlier text did. So I would have literally summed this whole thing up with uh, confident, funny, blunt, dominant, great oral skills. Um, I love to travel, just missing a little, and I love travel and my cat, just missing a little, and then her name in my life. Like, bam, could be super, super succinct. And then he says, your turn, she doesn't respond. So this is the first time he's getting non-compliance. He waits uh, three days, which is good, so he's patient. And he says, speechless already. So this is a pretty good follow-up text. She says, you took my breath away. He says, I haven't even begun, began. Think you'll be able to keep up. So here he makes a little spelling mistake. It's begun, but whatever, this minor shit. She says, I doubt you'll be able to keep up, but please continue. Okay, so this is a very hard attempt for her to wrestle back the frame. She's gonna be, she's the one saying like, no, 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 you're the one that's not gonna be able to keep up with me. So yeah, especially with this girl, you know, I can tell from the picture, she's like a hot chick, probably used to getting what she wants. So she likes to shit test guys and just kind of see how they react. So he says, you sure can't keep taking my breath away and let me die. So he's responding to the fact that she needs to respond. It's okay, uh, I would have said this without the emoji. Um, and I would have said, um, I would have said, I would have said, your, it's your turn, I believe, right? Bam, that's like a much more succinct way of getting the same point across. You always wanna say things as succinctly and simply as possible. You never wanna overcomplicate things just for the sake of overcomplicating them. She says, I'm very confident, chill, all about good banter and don't take things too seriously unless it's warranted, extremely ambitious and driven. I love food culture, I think they both go hand in hand, pretty spontaneous, pretty uh, sp sporty and outgoing. I'm a sucker for challenges and new things. Okay. He says, uh, I like that you're chill and confident. Makes me think that you're open-minded about life and perspectives. You sound like someone I'd enjoy getting to know better in person, but you have to bring the banter and then like a triple smiley face. And then unfortunately he doesn't wait and he says, goes for the clothes. Do you like why? So his text game is deviating from, you know, just being on point the way it was in the beginning to now it's like, he's making some subtle mistakes, not as confident, he's not as dominant, he's a little bit more needy. Now it's not clear who's the buyer and who's the seller. So. I would have said pretty much all of that he said. I would have just said, uh, I like that. Uh, 
makes me makes me think that uh, makes me think that you're uh, that you're open-minded and fun. Uh, we should we should get to know we should know get to know each other in real life and see and see if this is the case. Something like that could be much better. No smiley faces. And I wouldn't go for the double clothes. Like you sound like someone I'd enjoy getting know better. That's a soft close. And then do you like wine? It's another soft close. So he's almost double soft closing her. She says, haha, don't worry, I'm all about the banter. I'm actually a bartender, so I have very extensive knowledge of wine. But I'm not really a good thing because I'm a pick, bit picky with it. Ha ha ha. I'm not a big drinky, drinker generally though. How about you? So he says, not a big drinker as well, but I love wine. That's good. You should definitely pick a bottle for a romantic date. Granted, it's sweet. And don't worry, I'll stop you after one glass. Now, I don't like this text. Again, it lacks confidence, lacks dominance. Like, you should pick the wine. Like, he's the fucking man. Like, why should she pick the wine? And then also, don't worry, I'll stop you after one glass. That suggests that, like, it's going to be a boring day. Like, I would have completely said that completely went in a different direction. Or at least worded this completely differently. I would have said, um, I would have said, it, it's okay, comma, I'll be sure to get you a little sippy cup then. Again, like, bam, like, fucking, like, just ragging on her, playfully teasing her for saying that she's not a big drinker. Uh, he could have also said, um, I said, good, uh, you can teach me a few things about wine, and I'll teach you about other things, right? That could have been a really good way to sexualize as well. She says, what's your favorite type of wine, red or white? Uh, I can do that for sure. I do want to know what exactly are you looking for? Okay, let's see how your response. Sweet white, looking for a cool girl I have chemistry with, kinky, cuddles, something casual at first, but open to something more, but I'm definitely not into meaningless hookups anymore. So here he makes a very clumsy mistake. The line that he's trying to use is kinky sex and cuddles. Kinky cuddles just doesn't make any sense. It's like you're trying to combine that, but it doesn't work well. So it's kinky sex and cuddles. If you're watching this, don't be sloppy, man. Um, Another part I don't like is uh, when he says, but definitely not into meaningless hookups anymore. He's trying to address a concern that doesn't exist yet. She never said that she's not into casual hookups. Maybe that's actually what she wants. Maybe she just wants to get fucked once and leave. So there's no point in trying to address concerns that don't exist. It's like if a girl's like, like by the way, I have an eight inch cock. Well, I didn't even ask you that you have how big your dick is. Like, why are you telling me? It's almost like that type of thing. Um, so yeah, I would have reverted that. I would have said, a uh, cool girl I have chemistry with, uh, maybe some kinky sex and cuddles, right? Or something along the lines of that, or maybe break my multiple oral orgasms record, right? She says, ha ha, God, sweet whites are always the best. I would say the same. If it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But if I'm honest, I'm not trying to meet anyone during the pandemic. I have people in my life I would need to look out for and it wouldn't be smart. So here I think he makes another mistake. He says, I totally understand. Let's plan something once this all ends. Let's exchange numbers. Why? Why is he settling for that answer? He's just, just, she's just giving him something. He's just accepting it. This would be the equivalent if you're doing sales and your prospect says, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready to buy yet. And you're like, okay, cool. Let's, uh, let me hit you up in a month. Like, you want to figure out why the prospect is not ready to buy if you want to you know, be a good closer. So I would have said, I would have said, glad to hear we're on the same page. Uh, are you worried I have corona or something? And then try to figure out what exactly is her concern. With corona, it could be two things, three things. It could be her safety, it could be her friends or family's safety, or it could just be that she feels like a bat Samaritan if she goes out and meets people. You want to figure out which one of those it is before you can really address it. She says, yes, yeah, sounds good. What's yours? I'll text you. So here she's really controlling the frame. Like now it's, got, it's gone from him being the buyer to it's unclear to now she's the buyer. She's the one that's demanding terms. She's the one that's approving or disapproving of his answers. She's the one that's going to be picking out the wine. She's the one that's going to be texting him. So he basically lost control of the frame and now she has become the dominant one in the interaction, which is not good when you're interacting with a submissive woman. So he says, done. She texts him, hey, cutie, is blank your real name? She says, haha, no, it's my nickname. My real name is blank, but no one calls me that. He says, quite unique. Don't forget to save my name with hearts and sprinkles. I don't like that. Not for this chick. She seems like the kind of girl that likes to really shit test guys. So you don't want to be soft. You don't want to say hearts and sprinkles. You don't want to give her like winky face and all that. I would have said, I would have just literally respond to that, except me with a devil face, right? Like, yeah, like challenge her, shit test her, have some fun with it. Build some tension in the interaction. Don't be just a giant pushover and just fucking be like, yeah, 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 let's save hearts and sprinkles. She says, thank you. Is blank short for anything? Of course, expect nothing less, haha. So here I would have called her out on that and been like, because she already said that. I've been like, is that your catchphrase? Right? Like just playfully tease her. 
just it's blank short into uh, perfect uh, perfect for now and then he, she doesn't respond so he waits two days he re-engages her with a meme she doesn't respond so he waits a few more days and he says you got and then he makes a pun with her name she says wow did you come up with that yourself so here he does says something pretty funny you know i posted in a group chat of 300 people and she says oof amazing always knew you were punny right so here he uh, it's a very good excuse to sexualize always knew you were punny um I've been like, wow, that sounds so dirty. Like I would just respond with something like that and taking it again in a more sexual direction. Like he has this opportunity to buy, you know, like get her more excited, more invested in the idea of meeting and then capitalize on it. And then she says, uh, he says, I hope you're a two. She says, of course, don't ever doubt it. Again, she's using that line. Like this is, this is why I have to be like aware of what's going on in the interaction. You can't be a robot so you can catch these things and be like, wow, that's really your, your phrase of the day or something like that. Or you keep, you, you keep saying that or something like that. She'd be like, haha, oh shit. Instead, he makes a pretty big fuck up. He says, we'll see about that on a romantic date. Do you like what? So he tries to soft close her with the same exact thing again. And this is purely because he's being sloppy. He's not paying attention. He's just like being a little bit of a text robot. So, you know, you know when you do stuff like that, it shows to the girl that you're not paying attention, that she's just like, you know, that you're just like a text robot. You're not actually like really involved in the interaction, which is a negative thing. And she doesn't respond. She says, you hate sweet white that much, huh? And she says, do you always ask everyone the same question so she catches on? But it was still a shit test. This would have still been salvageable if he said something like, only the cute ones, or only the punny girls, or something like that, or yes. Right? That's how you pass the shit test. What he does is he apologizes and says, sorry, work in a family matter is taking a lot of my time this past two weeks, but, now I'm, but I'm good now. He's apologizing for the fact that he just repeated himself like, why would you apologize for that? It's not like you actually did something bad. You were just a little careless. Um, you know, like, the way to pass the shit test would have been to fully own it and just make it seem like you don't give a shit. Like, yep, every single time. Or, yep, on weekends I do. Something along the lines of that, that would have been shit test passed. Unfortunately, he fails the shit test, and then she doesn't text him back. All right, so let's take a look at what exactly happened here. So, several things. First off, the interaction starts off really good. In the beginning, He's the buyer, he's the one that's dictating the frame. But she just slowly chips away at his frame, and as the interaction goes on, he just slowly loses control of the interaction, and you're then, she's the buyer, she's the one dictating the terms, she's the one that's saying what we're gonna do, what we're not gonna do, and he's kind of the one that's following along, which is bad, not the dynamic you wanna have. Secondly, he's a bit too flamboyant and wordy with the way he says a lot of things. So, Especially with girls who are like this, who just kind of respond positively to dominance and confidence. You don't want to be like overly wordy. You don't want to be like, oh gosh, like that's not the shit you want to do. You want to be direct, succinct, and straightforward, right? Now I interpret that as strength and, you know, being overly wordy as almost like a weakness. Thirdly, he gets a little sloppy. Like he says kinky cuddles, like clearly that's kinky sex and cuddles. And even worse, he tries to soft close on the same thing twice. So this is just a result of not paying attention to what you're doing. You know, you don't want to be sloppy. And fourth, he fails her shit test. You know, her shit test is pretty clear. Wow, do you say, or like, do you always ask the same question twice? The way to fail that shit test would be to apologize, to just deflect, to make an excuse. The way to pass that shit test will be by 100% owning it. And I would say the last mistake he made is he also just kind of, when she said, oh, I'm not going to meet anyone, you know, because of Corona, he just gave up way too easy, right? Again, this goes back to the analogy I made earlier. You know, if you're a salesperson and your prospect says, yeah, this is interesting, but, you know, I don't think I'm going to buy it for a few months. And you're like, oh, okay. But you have to figure out why. Only then can you evaluate, you know, if you can actually make the sale happen or not. But you can't give up, like, at the first sign of non-compliance. All right, hopefully you guys found this video valuable. And if you want me to roast your text game, then email in your text interactions with a little bit of a backstory to the email in the description below, and I'll see if it's a good fit for the channel. Also, if you guys haven't already, check out our Instagram at RealPlayingFire. We're always posting text game of the day, memes, just a lot of value there that you don't want to miss. And of course, hit that subscribe button right now. Help us get 10,000 subs so I can keep putting out awesome content for you guys. We have a lot of great things planned in the future. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time.